Hey guys, and welcome to a long overdue progress report video for Seed of Andromeda. I know it's been a really long time since the last video, so I wanted to make this video to kind of let you guys uh, know what's going on with development, what we're doing. Uh, no, we're not dead. We're still working on this uh, day and night. Uh, there's just a lot of work to be done. We had planned on getting the 0.2.0 .0 build released uh, months ago, honestly, uh, to you guys. Uh, but uh, upon taking on new programmers and evaluating the code, we've realized that in order to uh, make the game that we truly want, we needed to actually refactor the code uh, majorly, and we needed to rewrite a lot of it. So uh, what I've been doing over the past few months has been mainly just rewriting the core engine, changing all the systems up, and making it much more efficient. Uh, a lot of the other programmers have been helping me out with that. Uh, they've also been working on some new features, uh, and they've been getting into the code. Uh, but right now, everybody's still a student, and a lot of us have jobs, so we haven't had a whole lot of time to work on it yet. However, uh, keep in mind, next May we are planning on doing a Kickstarter so we're gonna try to get all of the goals that we can uh, reach before May uh, for for the our Kickstarter launch uh, and I hope you guys will support us then uh, so anyways what we've been working on uh, like I said I've been doing a lot of refactoring we needed to rewrite most of the engine uh, right now probably 70 to 80 percent of the engine have been, has been completely rewritten and the other 20 percent is getting uh, rewritten in the next few weeks uh, so a lot of the the code is a lot cleaner it's a lot more extensible and easier to use uh, it's not spaghetti code anymore. Uh, that's really important. Now there's still uh, quite a few bugs. Uh, we haven't gotten to the bug fixing phase after this this rewrite because there are some bugs that have been brought on because of the rewrite. But uh, it's just really important to tackle all this stuff. So uh, disclaimer right away: ignore these weird looking trees with the uh, weird shapes on the tops. Uh, right now this is all just debugging stuff. We're testing all the new stuff, so we haven't ac actually had time to really put a lot of attention into the biomes. Uh, and then those big tall towers in the distance, those are that's some more debugging, just placeholder stuff. Just ignore that. Uh, so the first thing I'll talk about, even though I've got all this cool stuff in front of me, we'll ignore that for now, is voxel level of detail. Uh, so in order to get a really far view distance uh, in the voxel side of things, because you'll know we, we actually have uh, two layers. We have a voxel layer and we have a far terrain height map layer. Uh, we need to have a really far voxel layer so that you can see more detail in the terrain. You can see your house far further away and see creatures walking around the voxel terrain. Uh, so we've adopted a level of detail algorithm. As I move towards these trees in the distance, you'll notice they sort of, uh, they change detail. They get more refined. Uh, and the further away you are, the less refined they are. Uh, with this new uh, voxel level of detail uh, system, uh, what we can do is have further render distances with the voxels without uh, using as much processing for your graphics card, which is really nice. Now, it still needs some fine-tuning. It does a pretty good job right now of approximating the shape. I don't know if you can see down there. You can see the edges of that little cliff. It pretty much retains almost the exact same shape. Uh, it just reduces lower uh, resolution by, by power of 2. Uh, it's really important to have this. Uh, we're going to keep working on it. We're going to get even further distances than what you can see here. I'm running this on my laptop right now. If I was on my desktop, we would be going much further. Uh, another thing that's really good for this, uh, the view distance, is we've actually switched uh, the way we store voxel data completely. Now, we used to store it just in flat arrays, uh, meaning all of the all of the data is just in a big block in memory, and there's no compression or anything like that. And that's really good for physics and things like that. Everything runs really quickly. However, it takes up a lot of space. So, uh, the Possible solutions we had were to switch to an octree, which I didn't want to do because octrees are really slow, even though they do a really good job of compressing, or to switch to an interval tree structure. Now, an interval tree structure uh, uses what's known as a run length encoding compression uh, to store voxels. What, what it does is it takes, say you have 10 stone blocks in a row. Instead of storing 10 stone blocks in memory, it stores the number 10 and then a stone block. So it stores two numbers instead of 10 numbers. Uh, and that's giving us a bunch of compression. The, num the RAM usage is way down. And what we've actually done is uh, I've created a smart voxel container uh, that uh, what, what it does is whenever there's a lot of physics going on in a chunk, it'll decompress the chunk into a flat array so that it can do physics very quickly because as everybody knows, a flat array is the fastest thing to do physics on. And then after it quiets down, once the physics is all stopped, it will recompress itself. So it's really intelligent uh, with that. If you're doing a lot of updates on something, it'll switch to the best data structure for that. Once you're done, it'll it'll compress and save a bunch of memory. And that's another thing that's going to give us much larger view distances. In the next build, uh, the maximum view distance is going to be at least twice as far as it was before. I'm, I'm thinking it should be a little bit longer than that, but we'll have to see. We'll have to keep experimenting with things and see what happens. Uh, we've also got a lot of multi-threading performance improvements. Now, the game was multi-threaded before. Uh, however, it wasn't a very good architecture uh, because not everything was multi-threaded. The tree generation wasn't multi-threaded. The lighting wasn't multi-threaded. Really, the only thing that was multi-threaded was mess generation 
and uh, the actual chunk generation. Uh, but now we've multi-threaded pretty much everything. Uh, I still need to multi-thread physics, but I am going to be working that over the next few days. Uh, I just wanted to, I wanted to show you the, the physics. I wasn't able to finish it in time for this video. Uh, and this new multi-threading is keeping all of your cores uh, busier. Uh, before, if you had, say, a quad-core uh, computer, uh, probably only one or two of your cores would be doing processing at any time. Uh, and that just isn't really that great for uh, your uh, for your performance. You want to make sure your, your processor is busy so that everything is getting processed as fast as it can. Uh, so with the new multi-threading, uh, the, the threads are much busier. Uh, they're, they're able to do a lot more work at the same time, in the same amount of time. Uh, meaning uh, everything loads in faster, it's much smoother. Now I have Open Broadcaster running on this laptop, so it's a little bit laggy, but it's it's to be much smoother in the next build uh, uh, compared to 0.1.6. And it should be a lot less buggy as well, thanks to all these architecture changes. We've been fixing a lot of bugs in the rewrite uh, that we just wouldn't have seen if we hadn't rewritten it. Just That's how bad the code was, and I'm ashamed of it, but it is getting fixed, uh, mark my words. Uh, so next, uh, let's talk about... All this cool stuff that I have over here that I've been just kind of glossing over. Uh, first, let's talk about the new Flora method. We have a new connected texture uh, method that's called the Flora method, and it allows you to have uh, Flora, or when I say Flora, I mean plants, uh, that are multiple blocks in height. Uh, for instance, right here, this is this this green one is Sticky Dreamweed. This is two blocks high, and if I break the top block, it'll it'll get shorter uh, because it's two blocks. Uh, you can do this up to any height. I think. I think our max height is actually 16 or 32 for floor, but that's pretty high. We don't have any floor blocks that have uh, that height right now, but th there will be definitely, like vines and things like that for sure. Uh, but here we have Dreamweed. Uh, it is bioluminescent, and when you eat it, you will hallucinate or something like that. We haven't quite figured that out yet. Pretty cool. We've also got some mushrooms over here. These are called um, ice caps, I believe, uh, tiny ice caps or something like that. And then they are on top of some stone that is... Uh, permeated with those mushrooms as well, those mycelium. I lost the sun. Uh, so we have, yeah, we have bioluminescent plants using this connected texture method, uh, and as you can see, there's a lot of variation uh, in the same plant type. So this is light blue dreamweed, I believe, uh, but as you can see, each block, pretty much each block is a, a unique texture uh, with unique rotation and all that, and it looks really cool. Uh, we've also got some, I forgot what this plant was called, um, some kind of, uh, some kind of sack. Triton sacks, that's what it's called. It's the Triton sack plant. I'm not sure what the actual use of that is going to be yet. Uh, remember, we don't have gameplay yet. Uh, this phase is only for architecture. We're going to be working on gameplay uh, after December. Uh, we've got the skeleton plant. Uh, skeletal plant, it's pretty neat as well. These are all alien-esque plants. Uh, we've got the methane ball plant. It will be flammable and it will explode uh, because it's got methane in it. Uh, there's some other plants uh, that don't have textures yet. Uh, and there's going to be a lot more plants than this, uh, definitely. Um, but that's what we've got for now. I just wanted to show you guys the new method because I think it's pretty cool. Uh, we've got a new wood type over here. This is the mangrove tree wood. Uh, the mangrove trees are like a really cool alien tree. It's got some interesting properties. Um, and we don't have any trees that use it yet because we haven't touched the biome system for many, many months. We've been just, just working on uh, the code. Uh, and here's some planks that use it, and there's the actual sapling for it. I just wanted to show you guys that. And we have made some changes to the plating again. Uh, we've got uh, like rivets that show on the side of uh, the steel, uh, and the, the textures have improved all around. Um, I don't know if I told you guys in the previous video, uh, but we have decided to get rid of the uh, 256 by 256 pack. We're going to stop supporting it, uh, because we had two artists that were each working on a separate texture pack, and it was just too much effort to uh, have George develop our, our high-resolution pack. Uh, to try to keep up with Andreas when he developed a low-resolution pack, because it's a lot easier to develop those low-resolution textures and make them look good than it is with the high-resolution ones. So we've decided they're they're both going to work on the 32 by 32 pack, the the low-resolution pack, and that's going to be our default pack. That's the one you can see right here. Everything looks great with it, and it's much easier to develop textures for it. Uh, we have our sprite sheet is like, or our our, um, our texture atlas is like over 50 pages long now, and it's going to keep getting longer. Uh, so that's it for textures, even though there's a lot more that I'm sure I've forgotten. Um, let's see. Ah, yes, we have night vision now. This is something Christian did. So if I put the sun down, as you can see, it's a lot darker now. It's pitch black. This is sort of to simulate what's going to happen whenever you're in an eclipse of your gas giant, because you're going to be orbiting a, ja a gas giant. It's going to be really scary at night. Um, so if you press the N key, you get night vision. So this is the low quality night vision. This is what you'll be able to build at the very low tiers of technology. This is sort of like what we have today. 
And then if you press in again, this is a higher tier of night vision. It's a much better quality night vision. Uh, and then if you press in one more time, this is the best night vision. This has no noise, as you can see. This is going to be the a really high tier night vision stuff that you can only build with special materials and with uh, a high enough skill and, and whatever engineering skills that it requires. Uh, and of course, if you make it daytime, everything is super duper bright, so you don't want to be using it in daytime. Uh, so that's night vision. We're going to have a lot of uh, really cool post-processing effects in addition to that, uh, like infrared vision and stuff like that, even though I think night vision kind of is infrared vision. Um, because we did refactor the rendering completely. Uh, remember, like I said, we've been rewriting pretty much everything. Uh, and while development pace has been slow, like I'm not showing you a lot of features, even though it's been like four months since the last video, uh, but all of the changes in the code are going to allow us to add new features much more quickly at the end of this year. Uh, I'm planning on getting the next build, 0.2.0, uh, released at the end of December, uh, around Christmas time. That's not a promise, uh, because I've been really wrong in all my previous projections, because I, I didn't realize how much actual code rewrite I was going to have to do. Uh, but hopefully we will get it released to you guys. There's a big feature list that has not yet been implemented that needs to be done by then, so I'm hoping I'll have plenty of time over Christmas break to get, uh, get developing on that. Uh, now let me check my little list and see if I forgot anything. Uh, yes, we have a new programmer, uh, Izaki Dutra. He is a uh, programmer from MIT. Uh, yeah, I believe it was MIT. And he is really interested in graphics, and he's uh, actually working on new atmospheric scattering for us. It's going to be a much better atmospheric scattering method than we have. Uh, and he's also working on some other shader effects, like the glow shader effect. And uh, I think that's all he's working on right now. Uh, but he's fresh on the team, still learning the, the ropes, uh, as are most of the other programmers. Uh, but we're going to hopefully see a lot of cool stuff coming out of him as well. Um, anything else? Uh, I think that's about it. Uh, I've probably forgotten something, but as you can see, uh, there's not a lot content-wise that has changed yet. But I assure you that the changes in the code are going to be very, very beneficial to the development of this game. Uh, and uh, even though it's been a while since the last video, I'll try to upload videos uh, more often, just, it just really depends on how many features we, we get out. I didn't feel like devoting an entire video to just a voxel level of detail or anything like that. Uh, so I guess stay tuned for the next video, guys. It'll probably be out in the next month or so. Uh, hopefully uh, it'll be out uh, before uh, December 25th. Um, and yeah, see you guys. Thanks.